Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're going to be doing a recap of the opening keynote from the JP Fan Fest. We literally just got done with it five, ten minutes ago. A lot of exciting stuff, some surprises, some positives, some not, but we'll be going over all of that in this video. Before I go any further, however, while Twitch is getting to enjoy me recording this live, actually, the YouTube chat is also getting to enjoy it live. On the YouTube side, I do have a sponsor for this video, so we're going to do a slick cutaway that I'm making no effort to cover up right now before we go any further we got our first sponsor for 2024 and that of magic spoon they're back and as tasty as ever if you haven't heard of them before magic spoon is a high quality high protein cereal that supports a low carb lifestyle i'm actually currently cutting down on carbs again just for a little bit so this sponsor came at a, a great time to help me keep that under control Fortunately, I can achieve that with both their delicious cereal and their more recent treat cereal bars. The bars always go first whenever they send me stuff because they're like soft and chewy and they hit that sweet tooth craving that I very often get. And they only got one gram of sugar to boot. So if you'd like to do the same and tame the inner nostalgia you have for a nice bowl of cereal, then be sure to give them a try. Click the link below and use code Mr. Happy to save $5 on your own custom box. They get a ton of cereal flavors to choose between, though. I definitely recommend the maple waffle flavor as my number one. And if you don't like what you try, Magic Spoon will refund your money, no questions asked, with their 100% happiness guarantee. So start 2024 with something new. Click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen and use discount code Mr. Happy to save $5. Or go to magicspoon.com forward slash Mr. Happy and save your $5 that way. It even ships to Canada and the UK, so you got plenty of places that can give it a shot. Thanks again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring, and now let's talk about some Dawn Trail stuff. Okay, and now we're back, so hopefully you enjoyed that, and you should go support the sponsor, Magic Spoon. I've actually got all the cereal in the box. All It's all on the table over there. So that's going to be edited in, but Twit, y'all don't get to see that. Y'all got to go watch the YouTube video if you want that. You just got to do it like that. Anyway... This was a pretty exciting live letter. A lot of people are going to be pleased with their predictions. The people who were pulling predictions out of their ass and had no basis in reality or context are probably disappointed because a lot of the stuff that we thought was maybe too obvious to be the answer ended up being the answer because it was obvious. <laughs> So I'm definitely in that camp of egg on my face as Twitter will no doubt let me know over the next 24 hours, but I am not disappointed at all. So, of course, after the countdown that we had for the live stream, we came into the full trailer, which wasn't as different as I was expecting, but there was an incredibly long sequence around the end showcasing the new job. Like, we had a few extra bits here with, like, Thancred, and, you know, we just got to redo some of the other scenes, and they reoriented the order of certain things. You know, Graha got to eat a taco. But then he gets a little showcase of our new job, which we knew they were going to go ahead and give Kryl in the trailer, in that of the Pictomancer. Now, for as, as a fellow Green Mage predictor, listen, Kryl's wearing the clover earrings here. You can see them right there. So they made it in. They just had nothing to do with Green Mage and obviously the turtles being green and all that. So while the hints were there, at most, they got us. All right. Pictomancer was, I think, one of the two obvious choices. And I was perfectly okay with that. The showcase that we'll get in a little bit definitely looks cool. And it is a job with a rooted history in Final Fantasy. For those who don't know, Realm of Final Fantasy VI is a Pictomancer. So it's not something random. It's not like a Lost Ark reference with Painter or anything like that. Pictomancer is our new caster DPS, but that wasn't the only thing they decided to throw in the trailer. Now, of course, we got to see some teasers for some of the new areas here, how big Tural is, the connection between South and Northern Tural, which they will cover a bit later. We finally get Alphano, who people were wondering why he was hidden this entire time, but it's just because it wasn't the fully completed scene. And they used this one last opportunity to show us our first female Hrothgar. And uh, I gotta say, especially in CGI, fantastic reveal, looks awesome. So I'm really glad that they decided to go for the double whammy, give us the new uh, gender for Hrothgar in the trailer itself with the character that was teased in 6.5, as well as a very extended look at kind of the flashier aspects of Pictomancer, definitely longer than the dancer section in the, uh, in the Shadowbringers trailer where they do the quick zoom in on the Lena looking dancer and then move on from there. So then Yoshi P has to take a jog out on stage. Don't know why this man couldn't have at least just started closer to the stage or something like that. But, you know, he got 
No wonder he was thirsty later on. But look at him. He's dressed up, swagged up, and no, the jerseys did not mean blitz ball. They're in the Tokyo Dome, so they got baseball jerseys. All right, that's all it is. And the Dome is also not a blitz ball reference. We're moving on from that. It's not happening. No, 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 no. Anyway, he spends his first little bit giving his uh, condolences and his, expressing his concern and appreciation for anyone who made it and anyone who might have uh, been impacted by the recent earthquakes in Japan. So he spent the first few minutes largely going over that, reading some of the things the Nico Nico chat had to say. And so we, we didn't have a translation. A bunch of people were panicking in the chat, like, is there an English translation? I thought there was an English translation. What are they doing? And they said it was going to be translated in English. He wasn't talking to us. He's just talking to, he's just talking to you know, the locals and making sure they're all okay and they're having a good time. And then he brought Kate on stage, who was a, a joy as always. Her stage presence is phenomenal, and everyone in the community loves having her at that lead uh, localization position. She's doing a fantastic job, um, especially with some of the more recent stuff that we've seen. You can definitely feel her impact on the game itself. So then we got into the announcement-related stuff, and of course, they started with Pictomancer. They did, of course, have a job video as well to go with it, and uh, they definitely had a lot of fun recording this one. As you can see, it has the brush for the weapon. It also has a little canvas on the side right there. Really interested to see what the weapon designs will look like, but we see them kind of taking on a Final Fantasy VI-esque approach where it's actually copying spells and elements from other jobs. You can see earth magic, lightning magic, fire magic, paints a bright blue sky with a, with shooting stars, followed by dropping a, a paint-like icicle before finally painting a moogle to fire a beam at this new enemy, might I add. It has this kind of distinct visual style that clearly stands out from the other jobs. It almost looks like deliberately not dulled down graphically, but stylized in such a way that all the skills stand out for the Pictomancer as a very unique sort of art style and it's uh, it's really cool to see so what they'll go over is of course you know it's going to be a ranged magical dps it uses a brush as a weapon it's going to start level 80 also starts in gradania the first job to start in gradania since gunbreaker back in shadowbringers as well and uh other than that, they just kind of tease elements of the Final Fantasy VI version. In Final Fantasy VI, Realm just draws their opponent to attack them with, you know, their own stuff. Whereas here, they're going to be drawing just everything. They can draw landscapes, as you saw. They can draw spells. They can draw uh, different types of creatures, like the Moogle that you saw. Um, and then they said they're not really support E, but they do have some raid buffs for their opponents. And they will also not have a raise. That was an interesting detail to catch there. When he asked the crowd, is anyone going to be swapping? He said, well, you won't have a raise. And then just kind of moved on from there. <laughs> that was it. That's all. And then uh, they actually had someone come out to uh, cosplay as the Pictomancer because everyone was mad that. Oh, so something really funny happened here. So everyone in the crowd was complaining that Yoshi P didn't dress up as Pictomancer. And he said, you know, I'm 50 years old. You don't want to see that. And then my chat was talking about how, you know, we want to see the midriff Yoshi P. So I said it out loud. I was like, oh, yeah, everyone just wants to see the midriff. A minute later on the mainstream, they're like, so we're being informed that in the chat, they're saying that everyone wants to see Yoshi P's midriff. So please know. And I was like, are you? No, no, no. That's Foxclon. Are you ratting me out? Did you rat me out? I think he ratted me out. I know he follows the stream because I saw him follow once live. I know he was here and I know he ratted me out. He was in the speaker like, yo, listen, Mr. Happy just said that chat wants to see your midriff. So, uh, you know, what do you, I don't know what you want to do about that. So, um, I mean, do we, do, do we, no? Okay, we got it. There you go. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is just them going over the usual details that, you know, we've come to expect. Gradania level 80. I mean, and then just some fluff pieces that, you know, like I said, they're going to be drawn stuff and that's how they attack. I think it's a really cool concept, very different from the rest of the stuff we have in 14. Very different aesthetic as well. Not to mention the artifact gear. It looks pretty good. So I'm excited to see how Pictomancer will actually play when uh, we eventually get our hands on it during the early access period, which was the very next thing they addressed. Now, normally this trailer would have ended with a release date. They actually didn't do that this time around. They covered this even before the Pictomancer stuff. They have an internal date, but after what happened with N Walker, they don't want to say it until they're sure that's the date they're actually going to hit. So we won't be finding it out till later. Consequentially, something we were expecting, the collector's edition and a pre-order date were completely absent. So that prediction, while it was rooted in history of things they've done with previous 
uh, letter from the producer live, sorry, I'm sorry, opening keynotes when it comes to these events did not end up being the case. So we don't know the release date. We don't know the pre-order date. We don't know that. We don't know any of the dates at this point. So you're just going to have to look forward to it from a future letter from the producer live, which we don't have a date on, but I would probably expect the next one to be in March if I had to guess. So that's what we are looking at here. They also cover some language changes for the German version. They took a few minutes to do that. But Pictomant for the uh, German terminology upgraded from Duplicant in Final Fantasy VI. And then we get into the expanding upon the fluff pieces, you know, seeing new areas, new threats, new allies, all that sort of stuff. And uh, of course, we add Kryl to this image right here. So we get, you know, all the different characters that we're going to be meeting and that we're in the extended trailer, of course, our new character here, whose name I am so terrible at pronouncing. It's actually not that hard to pronounce, but like I'm going to have to say it a few times before like it's second nature to me. Um, but I, she looks great. <laughs> I'm just saying just she her character translates super well into the CGI trailer. So I was really glad to have seen that. Uh, now, patch 6.55, we did get a date on January 16th. This was expected. In fact, back in October at the European Fan Festival, it was said that the Xbox beta would also be mid-January. Spoiler alert, later in this show, they confirm it will actually be in February. You only have to wait a few more weeks for that to actually hit, and that was still kind of in the scope. They did say between mid-January and, and like early February-ish time, so they're kind of just leaning towards the latter time. They'll let 6.55 release on its own. We'll play that, and then the Xbox beta will come rolling, and the open beta might I add. So not a closed beta of any kind, just straight into open beta. Now, going into Tural, they confirm that, as we saw in the trailer, the northern part of Tural will also be prevalent here in uh, in Dawn Trail. So, you know, not going to some random other nation, not going to like Maricidia, not splitting it like Stormblood, but splitting between North and South Tyrol, which have an actual, have a lot of similarities according to them on stage, but there's a major, major thing that is shown and a lot of teasers they gave us about stuff that's happening in Northern Tyrol that seems a little less vacation-y. <laughs> Definitely a... Uh, a little less vacationing. You'll see what I mean in a second. We have a bridge that's perfect for fighting Gilgamesh on, so I better see him in Hildebrand again, and I better fight him on that damn big bridge. And then they show off some new areas. Now, these areas we've seen, this is just like a combination trailer of all of the uh, area trailers that we saw before, as well as some new stuff. It kind of just slipped in some new things we hadn't seen before, especially when we get to more of the Wild West areas, which we can even see, you know, it's got a classic Wild West town, the saloon, of course, which everyone's going to want to be hanging out in. Um, we get all the different wildlife, and of course, they're trying to showcase all the additions with the graphical update. And then we also got this, like, dark forest-looking area, which I don't recall us seeing back in October. Uh, you'll see that as we skip ahead right here. Really like the way this looks. It's almost like an underground forest in a sense. At least that's what it looks like. It's really hard to see above the canopy. So this might be another section of the forest that they had mentioned that basically the canopy blots out the sun. We never really got to see that, um, I guess, in practice. They just told us that was the case and then showed us areas of that map that were not blocked out by the sun. So it was kind of weird. So I just get to see more of that area. But those aren't the only things they showed. Then this shocker hit us, although I'm not shocked at all because this is exactly what I was saying was going to happen. Not exactly. I actually have changed my theory, but I fully within the realm of what I was expecting. We got tr like the Tron like city. So this is what looks like a supercomputer city, which makes sense given we saw a supercomputer in the October preview. Now, my theory about this is that it's actually a digital world that is like the people's built it ages ago in order to preserve their lifespan or through some of one of the calamities or so, of some sort. Um, it's actually called Solution 9, which is interesting. That is actually the name of one of Zidane's trances in Final Fantasy 9. Now, Final Fantasy 9 features a, a, a dichotomy between two different worlds, Terra and Gaia. So that dichotomy is very likely to be some of the inspiration regarding this kind of alternate area. It's a civilization completely separate from Tuli Olal, and whether or not, I mean, it might not be a reference, but to me, this screams digital, uh, just, just, just digital civilization, some sort of preservation 
of the past. And of course, you look at it and see, Allig and I think elegance, but you can see some really interesting details, actually, if you pause this image. You can see some of the screens and almost the... Uh, uh, the way this town is actually kind of uh, structured, I suppose. You can see what looks like almost like a street bar over there. You can see an ad with, with just somebody's face on the right-hand side. <laughs> so you can see all of these kind of almost uh, like movie-esque futuristic cliches, I suppose. And uh, that kind of gives you a little bit of an insight into the city that we're going to be looking at. But Final Fantasy 2077 is looking... Pretty sweet as far as I'm concerned. And I have more aspects later that kind of help me with that theory that this is kind of like a digitalization of existence. Of course, even though it's a digitalization of existence or it could be, I still, I mean, we'll still just teleport right into it, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's very Final Fantasy VIII Esther. It's definitely got that vibe about it, but the Solution 9 name. Now, a city of towering facades. And I pressed space bar and it went down instead of pausing. That's the big thing, towering facades. I know I'm covering it a little bit, so let me, uh, let me get out of the way so you can see it. Yeah, that's the thing that tells me that it's some sort of, constructed city, some sort of digitalization of everything right there. So um, I wonder if it's Allegans, and I know we're tired of them at this point, that actually escaped the falling of Dalamud via basically preserving their existence. Now, obviously, they're really far from where Dalamud uh, would have struck the Crystal Tower, but that earthquake rocked everything. How far it rocked is a big question. It's always possible. The thing that separates northern and southern Tyrol may have even been an aftershock that reached all the way out there. But whether or not that's actually what is happening here, they've they've actually apparently cropped this to avoid spoilers. So I'm, I'm very curious to see what it's actually going to achieve. Now, unfortunately, my headset's dying right as we speak because I've been wearing it all day and didn't change the battery when I woke up. Hey, but you know, that Steel Series battery life is always, uh, you know, doing great. You know, exclamation mark Steel Series on the Twitch chat, save 12% year round, or just use it in the YouTube video as we always have. But you know, that's that's always there. Thanks, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring the video, by the way. Uh, <laughs> people were telling me that there's a Blitzball Stadium. They've clearly edited out. And to that, I say, no. Anyway, that's my last point on that. So. I am going to uh, keep moving on with that point. We also see uh, the outside of this, what looks to be the outside at the very least of this. And it's got a very kind of the wild, wild west pieces of the civilization. It's actually got like a mix of wild, wild west. Some of the things we see in other parts of Tuliolol. Um, I'm sorry, not Tuliola, of Southern Tural. And then it's got the giant mecha tower in the back. So this area is called Heritage Found. And it's just a place people live, by the way. It's not some like mysterious location that is like uninhabitable. It's like secret locked away. Like people just live here in this area. And it essentially functions like the Thunder Plains of Final Fantasy X. The sky is permanently covered in thunder clouds. You can see Levin striking across the sky at all times. And you could assume that this giant machine is powered by this endless supply of electricity. It may even be the thing causing it, but it might also be that it might also be being powered by it. One of the two is probably true. So you get some images of this thunder plains like area that we have here. You can see the massive kind of combination of civilizations that's happening here. You can see bridges in the distance, lightning rod towers that probably channel the lightning, the leaven that comes down, attracts the thunder shocks and then redirects it into power that actually allows most of this stuff to actually function. Yeah, it does kind of remind me of Vesper Bay to some capacity, funnily enough, but this ultra high tech tower and the dome there is where I'm fairly certain our city of Solution 9 actually takes place. And then they showed us this and everyone went, near? Is Yoko Taro here? <laughs> all, it, all it takes is, is one carnival thing and that's all it takes. That is all it freaking takes. <sighs> anyway, uh, moving on, new allies. We get to see some new stuff. So we have, of course, two of these we've already spoken about, but then we have some two new ones. We have the Hanu Hanu in the bottom left. They are a recolored variation of the Vanu, local, of course, to uh, to the new world. And on the right, uh, they had to go with a different name. So these are the trolls from Final Fantasy XI. They're not called that here. I don't remember what they're called because they never put it on screen. He just kind of says it real quick. Um, they are giants, but they're not gigas. Uh, they have a totally other name that I'm sure my Twitch chat will remind me of uh, at some point in the near future. I got so locked into the Hanu Hanu just doing this. 
and I can't help but my Final Fantasy XI brain calling the trolls trolls. So they're called Yakhoys. Yeah, there you go, Yakhoys. Yeah, they're I, I, from Final Fantasy. They're trolls from Final Fantasy XI. All right, that's it. That's it. And then we have a hilarious picture of the Brady Bunch of Mammal Jaws that we have. Now, keep in mind that two of these are featured in Final Fantasy XI, the middle one, who's looking like, hey, yo! That's like the, you know, the 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 meme of the guy who's looking at the, the girl as she walks by, and the girlfriend is like, it kind of reminds me of that. He's just like, yo! You see that? And then Mage on the right, just whatever. Uh, they got the one on the left with the fruit. You got the kid who just staring at the fruit. He doesn't want the fruit for dinner. He wants bagel bites. And you can tell he wants the bagel bites because he looks miserable right now. And then you got the dude on the right who is baked out of his mind. He doesn't even understand what he's looking at or why he's here right now. But either way, the diversity of the mammal jaw, and this isn't all of them according to what we've heard, as well as some of the other things and the variations we haven't seen amongst the other people who live amongst Tuliolal and the different continents of Tural. Uh, honestly, great. It's good to see something more visually representative of the variation in the culture and not just like, oh, these two races live together kind of thing. You know, it's a nice, again, it's a nice different uh, separation of, of just it's more personalization of all the characters and that becomes especially evident with some of the things that we see later mm. yeah he got long he got long fingies there on the right so as we continue to move on they start going over uh systems that you know we already knew you know we're going up to level 100 he thanks 1.0 players for playing the whole times of course viper and pictomancer both here uh, then we get to keep going on core battle content. We'll be getting fates, the hunt, treasure hunts, quests and side quests, you know, the stuff we expect new dungeons, which we do get a quick look at. Uh, now these are dungeons that we got to see art for, uh, in the previous opening keynotes and the previous fan festival. So most of this is stuff we have already seen. We're just getting to see what it looks like in game and not just concept art or screenshots or anything of the sort. And it all looks, of course, as wonderful as one would expect. They're dungeons, you know, dungeons have come up in qualities visually, especially over the last several expansions. And that continues to be the case with a whole bunch of different uh, areas that we're going to here, a whole bunch of different uh, vibes that we're getting from these. But of course, as you no doubt saw when we were looking at Northern Tyrol earlier, uh, not everything is as it seems because as we go through this dungeon and we were told last time there were major spoilers in this dungeon they had to cut out. Um, they then cut to the next dungeon. This was one of the other dungeons they showed. I believe that's the supercomputer looking one that uh, that we saw like uh, just like a not even like a concept art of it at, in October. Um, and, you know, obviously, again, it looks the supercomputer esque area. I'm just going to keep calling the whole area a supercomputer. Now, for new threats, we see Valagar Manda Render on the left. We see the Eliminator in the middle, which is making a whole lot more sense now. And then we see, as I like to call it, the Swoltar. Now, that is not its official name. They did give us the official name of the uh, the barrel. I think they're called barrel tenders or barrel tars or so. Yeah, they're called barrel tenders. Um, and they. Uh, that thing, that thing works out. That thing works out. That yeah, Chad Tar, Jack, Jack Tar. But yeah, no, it's called Barrel Tenders. Yeah, instead of a million needles, he hits you with a million squats, million punches. He didn't even gotta waste his time on needles. That dude, that he just works out. That's it. Uh, duty support. All I had to really say here is, of course, it'll be there again. And Kryle, of course, will be one of the duty support characters. Not much to really elaborate on there. Some new gear and recipes. They got we got some look at some of the artifact armors that we haven't seen yet. Uh, we have Summoner on the left here. Really like that look. The Samurai one, which looks dope. I thought the Sage one in the middle right was Paladin for a second. But then I saw the new list. I had the new list pointed out to me. Really like the Sage one. And then I think the winner here, especially with the update to the leather textures, is probably the Gunbreaker on the right side of the screen. So that one I really like as well. I, these, these all do it for me. I especially like Summoners is a very different vibe other than the horn than what we're kind of used to at this point. So it's nice to see them not just get another robe. Like, is it robe adjacent? Yeah. Is it just another robe? No, it's something that, kind of stands out a little bit more than a lot of their previous ones, which are, is kind of whatever for me. Uh, then we got to see Machinist on the left, the leather, of course, doing work there. The Reaper one, which, pff, yes, 
Anyway, <laughs> and then you have the Astro who showed up in their pajamas. That one's just, I don't know what's going on there. That one needs some work. And then you finally have Paladin on the right, who's got this like all seeing eye in the center right there. Like, I guess if you wanted a bedtime glam, then Astro seems to be doing the trick. But seven out of eight of what we just saw here, I like all of them. It's just the Astro one that I'm not crazy about. Um, and it's not even that bad, but it feels like side by side with these, like so much less. Like, yes, it looks better with the graphics update. It doesn't, it's it, it's fitting to the job. It's got the stars and everything, but it just looks less side by side to these. If you want comfy and cozy though, I feel like that'll probably do it for you. Now this, I had already forgotten about this with everything else that had happened. This was a shocker. So we're getting new lifestyle content. And there was a question of what lifestyle content even is to the team. Cause they named a whole bunch of stuff when defining lifestyle content. What I didn't have on my list was cosmic exploration because we're literally going to other planets, plural. <laughs> and it looks like it's crafting gathering content between the Loprits, the aliens in the back. And then, you know, seeing the crafting and the gathering here, literally cosmic exploration. So yeah, we have Tural, we have our vacation, but by the way, we're also going back to space. Now what's interesting about this is that it's been long debated how space is actually handled in Final Fantasy XIV because uh, the way that the shard is split, it's a question of does it split all of reality or does it split just kind of this like uh, unique space around the source itself. So I wonder if any of that's good because like we've we have started we've obviously explored interstellar travel and stuff already in Endwalker, um, so I don't think it's ever been hard confirmed. I think Yoshi P has I'm uh, not Yoshi P Koji has addressed it on stage and just kind of given it the we don't want to say at this point kind of thing. So I do wonder if any of that gets addressed as we're going to be going to other planets and whatnot, but. It is essentially, yeah, cosmic firmament in a sense. And the star or planet that we're on is going to be constantly evolving as we go patch to patch and we work together with other players in order to build it all up. So if you were missing something like Ishgard, this seems to be more in that vein, uh, Ishgard and Diadem specifically. Now the question is, will they do leaderboards? Will they do stuff like Saint of the Firmament again? Those questions still remain. But at the very least, that content is making its return here in Dawn Trail. So we'll have to wait for additional details. We don't know exactly when that's actually going to be making its debut. Now, the new Alliance raid. We knew this was Echoes of Vanadil. We knew that we were getting a new key artwork with this. Now, this is the We Are Vanadil 20th anniversary key art. But I said what they show us will be a big determining factor of how the story is going to go. And they did exactly the thing I thought they would do. Now, they had a lot of options, and they said this is one of many key arts that they have, but it is of a character that had to be present. You could not do Echoes of Vanadil without the character that they decided to show us, and that is none other than the Shadow Lord. This was Final Fantasy XI's initial final boss upon getting to rank six with your city nation. This is before any of the expansions. This is before anything. In fact, he wasn't even really beatable when the game first came out at the level 50 cap in Japan. And he has gone on to have a storied history that has been explored vastly, even as recent as the expansion story that was finished earlier in 2023. Yeah, that kind of shocked me to see that they started coming back around to other elements of his character, even all the way into the prior year. So he has a very storied history with Final Fantasy XI, and he has a lot of lore and a pretty dark and twisted backstory. Now, how much of that they'll actually explore? Big question mark, because it is a 24-man raid. Other than the, the near raids, we haven't really gotten big explanations of a lot of this stuff. We have a little bit of lore dumping with Ivalice and some of the side quests we used to have with that. But I think they might need to go the route to filler quests in between if they really want to hit the right notes with this. I think there's a lot of lacking. Now, for those who are also 11 players in the back, there is what is known as a burning circle. That is basically the entry to a lot of boss fights. You crack an orb in it and the magic basically traps you and a monster in the same area. Very prevalent in the game's base content used to fight all sorts of bosses. And he is, of course, no exception to that burning circle rule. So... 
Uh, tragic character, but had to be in this. There are other characters that I have mentioned. Promethea is definitely one of them. And then our heroines and that of Lion and Prish would also be characters to expect. Some of you may know Prish from Dissidia, and she's definitely kind of a fan favorite. Shantoto is always a possibility as well, but given they did the collaboration and that's not canon, they might want to leave Shantoto out. And no, not Shantoto from the Black Mage quest line, not the same character. Just want to put that note in. So, Interesting, curious to see Soken's version of Awakening, which is the Shadow Lord's theme, and I'll be doing a video covering all the stuff you should need to know about the Shadow Lord. And don't forget, I do have a Final Fantasy XI Link Shell if you want to try the game out. Uh, it has plenty of people playing and can help you get through all the story aspects that you are missing. Now, eight-player raid. I predicted this would be original of 14. I was correct. This is not a reference to another Final Fantasy game, or at least not yet, because I do actually think it kind of is. This is the Arcadian. Now, the Arcadian, as you can see, is a giant GPU, and it is the centerpiece of the raid, no doubt, in, of course, the center of the city that we are looking at. Now, I couldn't help but notice some Bavelin uh, sorts of... So if you've played Final Fantasy X and you've gone through the symbols... Now, I don't know whose symbol that is. It reminds me of the symbols that we actually see in... Uh, a lot of the temples in Final Fantasy X. However, I also don't know, I'd have to look at all of the ASEAN symbols and see if that's one of them. Uh, one of the two vibes is there, but essentially an Arcadian is a, and I'm gonna just pull the definition up for you right now because I, oh, I had it up a second ago. No, yeah, oh, come on, I just had it, I closed it. Here it is. Relating to or constituting an ideal rural paradise. Sounds like the dream to me. But essentially, I, again, I think my theory of there being like a digitally constructed world that people are hiding out in, or in this case, some sort of evil is hiding out in, uh, could be at the center of it all. The question then just becomes, is, what, is that symbol something from like Ultima? Is that going to be more Final Fantasy X-esque? but it's a rural paradise. So even though we have this on the outside, what is on the inside is likely to be a drastic difference from what we are seeing here. So interested to see where that goes, but it is again, an original raid to Final Fantasy 14. I think they knocked it out of the park with Pandemonium. So I'm glad to see them taking that route again, especially with the ultra Final Fantasy 11, you know, 24 man raid. I don't think we need to have, you know, two Final Fantasy reference raids. I think it's good to kind of do something to expand more of just 14's world and then also have the whole, you know, Vanadeel existence thing. Uh, so with that, we move on to the next bit, which was the new ultimate raid. Now, the next one, we've been told by Mr. Ozma himself. In fact, Arthur has ran into him and asked him about more than one ultimate. And he said, yes, there will be more than one. Uh, he didn't want to say yes to three. He kind of gave the PR answer of, oh, you know, maybe one day we'll do three. You know, he did that. But he did say more than one. So this is just the next ultimate in 7.1. Now, there were two possibilities of this. There was Shinryu because Stormblood MSQ would follow the pattern they've laid out up to this point of doing raid series MSQ, raid series MSQ. We had Omega for the raid series of Stormblood. So the guess would be Shinryu. I didn't really think the theme worked there. I feel like just Stormblood's too disjointed of an MSQ. Even if you DSR it, it's kind of rough. And it seems like Yoshi P agreed because they skipped right ahead to Eden. And it is named Futures Rewritten Ultimate or Fru, if you prefer. And uh, I actually think this is, this, this is one of my most anticipated ultimates of all the topics that we've had up to this point. I think that Omega had a lot of room to do a lot of things to play out the tournament or to just play out Omega's growth, which they did. DSR, of course, did the very unique thing of doing the story rewrite. This one's literally called Futures Rewritten, so I won't be surprised if there's a DSR-esque bit to it. But let's be honest, we all just want to see Light Rampant and Advanced Relativity happen at the same time. And given this picture, I'm feeling pretty confident in that. So I hope you're ready to die. As long as it's not phase one. Oh, please don't be phase one. Actually, you know what? Be phase one. Don't, don't be phase six or seven, because then... Uh, uh, okay. Anyway, now that I've thought about that a little too much, and we can move on. So that's going to be our 7.1 ultimate raid. So please look forward to it. Now, 
Ongoing content updates, of course, we know there's going to be a Blue Mage update. We know there's going to be new Hildebrand. We know there's going to be a Deep Dungeon. At least there's plans for it. A Gold Saucer update, not, not Blitzball. A PvP update, and those updates are going to start in 7.1. New variant and Criterion dungeons that we're going to be seeing as well. Very interested to see how that goes. And finally, they decided to take it out of interviews. So Yoshi P even says on stage, so I've talked about this in interviews, and it's like, yeah, why haven't you been talking about it on stage? Interviews since NA, he's been saying we're getting an exploration zone. And I have to keep kind of like pushing back and be like, yeah, you know, he said it in an interview, but it's not really that clear because he's never mentioned it on stage. And that's kind of weird. No. So he finally said, yeah, we're doing one. All right. Like that's uh, he, he even he even says, like, I, I've sent it in interviews, but I haven't said it on stage. No details about it. They've just confirmed they are doing a Eureka slash Bogia style exploration zone. So if that's a content you were looking for, it is now something you can guarantee look forward to at some point we don't know when if i had to bank a guess i would guess three five eureka was in two five bozia was in three five for the zone itself i'm gonna bank on the three five but you know that's that's who knows we have no idea what to expect um and where we're going we don't live we don't know anything he doesn't tell us anything other than the confirmation that it's happening but it is a, it's a very full looking expansion with that a new limited job as well. They did not give us a preview image, but they did confirm what we all pretty much had guessed at this point in that it was going to be Beastmaster. Yes, they are already planning a beast collection log of some kind. You can play it solo or with other limited jobs. Now he specifically says other limited jobs. So a mix of Blue Mage and Beastmaster in content is looking very, very likely. Question is, how will it play? How will it function? Are there shiny Pokemon? <laughs> That's all I really want to know. And there better be an Elite Four of some kind. That's, uh, I'm just expecting somewhat of a Pokemon rip in some capacity. So yeah, Beastmaster limited job. We don't know when that will be. All they said is it's late. So we could expect a point three five four five five five. We don't know, but not anywhere near release. That is all we know for complete certain. Then moving on, they wanted to showcase some character differences with the graphical updates, and most of these look pretty good. So I don't want to, I mean, we can go through all of them, I suppose. That's the whole point of the video. But you can see here we have the male here differences, or, well, one of the male here differences that you can see here. The hair textures. I mean, I honestly, I just kept getting distracted by A, their clothes, and B, the wall behind them. But you can clearly see the hair textures being better, the shadows from the hair, the eyes, the nose, the roundedness of the chin, the ears, the, all the depth on all those things is a little bit better and rounded out so there's not as many polygons. Now we do see this with all of the other races and genders that they show. This one I think was in particular a really good one. She looks way less tired. Her facial features are again more rounded, the ears more detailed, and I can't help but notice again, the crest, the, the metal plate that connects the neck strap to the actual top. The lips, of course, being far more fuller in this one is a big, big noseable. And the nose being a little bit less up and a little bit more direct out for that one. Moving on, we have this, one of the darker skin tones, which they made a lot of note to talk about the darker skin tones throughout the entirety of this part of the presentation. Talking about how the game in its current form before the graphical update basically doesn't handle dark skin tones and dark areas very well. Any detail you might have basically disappears because of the conflicting nature of the lighting versus the character. They've instead gone in through such, an op such, such a work that it's far more clear the details that you have on the characters that you're designing if you are doing dark skin characters. So they they repeatedly made that note a lot when it came to this. He looks way meaner in the one on the right. Again, the muscle definition and his neck way more apparent. The hair for me, not as noticeable. It is, especially through the top. Um, but again, the nose being more rounded, the beard being less of a paste on beard and his mustache as well, less outlining around that stuff also. All worked fairly, fairly well. So then we have this. I think this was also, I think this was the best glow up. If it's, if it's not the best, it was one of the best glow ups for the female to the male, uh, the female previous to the female uh, updated. Um, between the eyes, the hair, especially the depth of the hair as you go towards the back of the haircut. Um, this was, I think, one of the best kind of showcases of before and after. And uh, I, at the very least, chat was definitely most noticing of this one and female Aura, which, of course, chat noticed female Aura. Of course they did. 
Anyway. Oh, this was also, this was one of my favorite glow-ups right here. Man is miserable on the left, hates his existence, doesn't want to play Final Fantasy XIV anymore. And now look at him. He's quite content with his life. He's moved on. He's gotten everything fixed up. He went to a stylist a little bit. You know, he got, his, got his, the touches done up under his eyes and everything like that. My man's looking way happier before therapy and after therapy with this one right here. So that's actually, that is, again, an, one of the more impressive glow-ups I think that they had, they genuinely made him happier. <laughs> it's pretty funny how he actually looks better. Like, like, like he actually, oh, this is actually another really good one right here. Uh, so we have, of course, you know, left and right comparisons for Ellison, uh, for the Ellison female. And this was another fantastic glow up, especially the shadow under the bang right there. That was a detail that they made sure to make more noticeable. Um, and also a big thing is the leather on her on her gear. Uh, this is a really good angle to see some of the upgraded textures on the armor itself. So this is also, I think the Elizans kind of the winners overall of everything that we saw for the updates. Um, they just look by far the most improved. And I don't know if that's because of their longer facial features not translating well with the previous graphics with the way the game looked before and now they are being given the chance to fix that that's probably something along the lines of why it looks like ultra pixely and like like squarish and whatnot uh so yeah definitely big glow up for both of them we move over to the male makote which has a bit of a glow up but i definitely one of the less like uh yeah like that's like yeah i see the difference but i'm not like ah like you know crazy about it just if you liked it before you'll probably like it after because it will look mildly improved you know uh going over to the female now this was another one where they made point to note the darker skin and how it will show in uh darker areas and again with her the hair detail i know they really like to focus on the features like the dark skin for uh the dark areas but the hair on her is the thing that really screams to me. I think this is also one of the better showcases of the graphical update that they have amongst the races. And you'll see which one I think is the worst showcase coming up. And it, it was the worst showcase when we saw it the first time, and I think it's still the worst one. Uh, then, going forward into the next, this one I like, the eyes in particular, as well as the detail of the beard. Um, I think that this one probably still needs a little bit of work. If funnily enough, the band-aids and the details on that, as well as the detailing around the nose right here. Probably the most important things is lips also, which they made note of on pretty much all of them. The scars are early. You can see the deepness of the scar a little bit better. But this one I wasn't as impressed with. Again, I can't help but just look at the detail of the thing on his armor right down there. Uh, moving on, this one I also wasn't that crazy about. I think, again, the hair and the depth that you see on the right is something that shines to me a little bit more. But I, I, this one doesn't really like I can see the clear differences in all the places we've mentioned before, the squareness on the nose and the chin and the lips and all that. But this one, this was another like, OK, that if you like this, then it's going to be a little better. But I wasn't like crazy about this one. Uh, then we get into Lollafells. We saw these enough last time. We don't need to see this picture anymore. I have seen this picture more than I ever want to see this picture for the rest of my life. And if I looked like this, I would change my character because I don't want to see this image and talk about Lollafell chins for 15 more minutes. So we're going to move on from that. Then we get to see the female Lollafell with the darker skin. Gorgeous. <laughs> that is a hella good update right there. For especially, again, around the armor. I just, I, I, my eyes kept getting drawn to the armor, but this, this was a proper glow up going from the left to the right a way better example than the one we spent 20 minutes on at the last fan fest oh so that one that one i really really like it's a lot more visibility in the features the eyes in particular doing really well the the deep ridges in the ear and again the hair the hair really comes through on this one especially as it kind of comes close to and i would dare i say clips into the af arm <laughs> or the the starter gear that lalafells have uh then we get into the male all rot I think this still needs a little bit of work. The scales do look improved, but I think they still need a bit more. Same with the horns a little bit here. It's a little paler. The eyes are not as like ultra glowy here. Um, and then you can see the other usual rounded out details like the nose and the lips and all that. But this one I wasn't that impressed with. The female Aura, again, my chat went nuts for because she does just basically look the same but better. Depends on how you feel about the scales. Somebody pointed out the scales kind of look like lace almost, which is not something I think everyone will be into. Um, but it's funny, they specifically made note 
that they wanted you to still be able to achieve that I'm dead inside look for female Al Ross. So just fine tune your characters. And they said you should still be able to get the I'm dead inside look. <laughs> the, fact, the fact that they called it out was hilarious to me. <laughs> I couldn't believe they specifically called that out. So, um, all right, well, that's it. Now for the graphical updates, I think these were the not winners, Hrothgar. Now I felt this way before, and listen, I see the improvements. They're pretty obvious to see, but I don't feel like they won a whole lot. You have to appreciate the ears. You have to appreciate the, again, more rounded features and the kind of poppier fur, especially on the nose. The lips, obviously, a little bit less uh, janky, but definitely not the winners when it comes to this entire conversation. And the bottom line is nobody cares. They just want to be able to wear hats. So... That's all there is. Uh, Male Vieira went from I'm angry at you to I'm going to murder you and everyone that you've ever loved. Like, that's that's the biggest change that I've seen. He goes from brooding to really freaking brooding right here. So that, that's, but I mean, in all seriousness, the the nose, big improvement. You can see it looks like a PNG on the left. <laughs> on the right, it actually looks like part of a character model. And the hair, especially as you get close to the ears, is very much improved. All of the shadows of the hair, of course, are details that matter. But my man here is pissed. So <laughs> there's that. And then another proper glow up here that we get for the female VR. Keeping very close to the original here. But again, rounding out the nose, improving the hair textures. You can see the shadows improving. Oh, even as the back of her hair kind of blocks the shadowing of her neck and the front of the hair. Like the higher up on her head blocks the lower part of her head. So overall, I think there's only a couple things that probably still need work. Again, male Al Ra and potentially female Al Ra, depending how you feel about the neck scales. Um, male Lalafell, I can barely, even they mocked about how the male Lalafell, I can barely tell the difference. The one that they showed at the very least. So uh, mostly wins, probably still a little bit more work. And they said we'll be seeing more as they continue to work on it leading up to the actual graphical update being implemented in the game. Now, we did also get to see some examples of the dual die channels. It works exactly as we would have expected it to, at least with most armors. So you can see here with the second die channel, you go from, you know, the, the color scheme on the left to being able to change the cape to being able to change the cape and the armor part itself basically what people wanted but that doesn't necessarily work for every single armor set now here's another example of it working the white part of the cloth being dyed to another color as you can see like that but there are other details that people may want to change but depending on the piece may not be able to and this is a piece where that example is shown the original one die and i think this is more of a decision of what becomes dyeable than anything else it's just the stripes on the cloth and then the two dies, it's just the cloth part of the vest itself. So there's obviously the part in the middle, both on the actual vest itself and the part hanging around the neck that doesn't actually change. And so there's questions of, and you can also, know, obviously the jeans also change along with the stripes on the actual cloth. Um, that, so there's gonna be pieces that are like that where there's too many parts that two die channels wouldn't cover them all. So you'll just have to trust their artistic vision. All that means is now everybody's gonna harass him at the next fan fest for the third die channel. So I hope he understands the door that he's opened by even adding a second one because it's never going to end. And we all know it. It's all always going to be the question that he gets going forward. So he went to go get some water real quick and then some additional updates. These are things that we already knew. These are things that are happening before Dawn Trail comes out. Reminders of the minimum and recommended system requirements. Minimum's still very low. The recommended's going up to, you know, something closer generationally, you know, four generations back pretty much with most of this stuff. Uh, well, at least with the CPU, but the CPU has, you know, gone a little bit nutso. Uh, we also have the uh, free trial reminder. The free trial goes up to Stormblood now. It has since, you know, late last year. And then uh, the Xbox beta, that's going to begin in February. Just a few more weeks before that becomes available. So you're looking forward to that. Continue to. It's not that far away. And then we have the 16 collaboration, which will be early April, which dates it for April 2nd or 9th. Now, they only mentioned that the 16 DLC exists. The first one's already out. The second one's being worked on. That is currently slated for spring, the second 16 DLC. Whether or not these are close together, there's no indication at all. But at the very least, you now know April 2nd or 9th for the 16 and 14 collab. If you're someone who just wants to sub for that, you now have an idea of when you can resub just to get that event done. At least for the first time, it's going to be going through. 
Then uh, he jokes around about how he thinks he forgot something. You know, they're out of time. There's nothing else to really talk about. And then, of course, we have to go back to the first thing that we saw. One of the first things we saw in that of the female Hrothgar who we get a quick little trailer for. We get to see a few different appearances and we get a few slides for. So there you go. In all of their glory, we have the female Hrothgar finally joining. As you can see, they have spines. <laughs> the number one thing I wanted to see with female Hrothgar, they are supposed to be matriarchal. They're supposed to be essentially the more powerful of the two. They're supposed to present as such as well. So them having a proper posture was definitely number one on my list of things that I wanted to see. I also really like that appearance. That appearance gives me kind of fang. And no, that's not a joke because she's a friggin' cat. She gives me kind of fang vibes with that one. So I kind of like that right there. And we just get a few different emotes, a few other the hairstyles, the skin colors. So we have uh we have it. That's a, the last race. And he does address that. He does say that I promised this would be the last race. But then he said, maybe I could be convinced to not make it the last race. We all know money speaks. Come on, money talks. If it'll sell copies, they were going to make another one. So he opened that door again and said, maybe we'll get another race sometime in the future. So uh, also the artwork on the right here, the gunbreaker female Hrothgar on the right that art that's dope that's dope right there all right so with that that was the last thing they really talked about right here and then they just recovered the lore about female Hrothgar if you read it in game you already know there was one other detail that I did forget when they were done talking about the graphical update bit they said they're working on the exact details but they do plan to give a free Fantasia to everyone so if you were hoping for that with the graphical update and of course with female Hrothgar coming that is something that they are planning to do. Now, in terms of major announcements, that pretty much covers everything. However, they do have one last little thing to share. Uh, they went back, of course, to our new female Hrothgar, and that is the new key artwork for Final Fantasy 16. So we don't know a handful of the characters that are in this. Um, we have Galul Jaja near the top. Above him, someone we don't know, we assume is some sort of princess or royalty that we're actually, uh, I'd assume, assisting in some capacity when it comes to uh, the uh, War of Ascension. Whether she's a villain or not is a question. She doesn't look very villain-esque, but you never know. So we also, of course, have Aaronville. We have Kryl. We have uh, Thancred on the right, Orion J. Some of the Scions notably missing from this, Ishtola is definitely the number one one to see that uh, she's missing here. Yeah, I meant 14. Sorry, I don't know why I said 16. I mean, we were just talking about the collaboration. Hi, Ivy. Uh, but then we have a bunch of new characters here as well. So, of course, we have our female Rothgar, the one that's actually recruited us for this one. Uh, and then we have uh, the community is dubbing him Amal John. And that's, that's this guy right here. This is Amal John. We, because we don't know who he is. We don't know his name. So he's, from this point forward, he's Amal John. Or, or I mean, he could be Jamalja as well, but Amal John. And then, yeah, so that's him. And then we have some Catboy back here as well. So those are, th those, we have four characters that, well, we know, we know this character now. So I guess I'll say three characters. We have three characters who... We don't really know a couple characters who we haven't had any quality time with. And then, of course, we have some of the Scions and Aaronville there. And, of course, we're just chilling right here. It's curious to see um, the twins and Ishtola and Graha, of course, all being absent. So possible that they are on the quote-unquote opposing side of the War of the Ascension. Uh, hence why they're not in this artwork. And I say opposing because, let's be honest, it's not going to be like an actual like, ah, the Scions are angry at each other. Ah, you know. Um, but still, that's, that's very likely to be one of the, one of the things, uh, Estinian also MIA here as well. So I expect this will be closer to what our scions of Dawn Trail actually end up being the people who we actually travel with for the majority of this. I'm curious to see if that'll be the case because this is a much more diverse cast than we're used to working with. I mean, we have just worked with the scions so much at this point. So that, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. So I'm very curious to see where that goes. And that was the end of the opening keynote for 
the Final Fantasy XIV Fan Festival from Japan. Now, there are no live letters or other major announcements planned. However, there are panels, and if any translations come out from those panels about any of the various details, then so be it. You know, we'll uh, we'll see where that actually ends up going. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, that covers everything you need to know about the recap. So appreciate everyone for tuning in to watch this. Uh, now we get to speculate. We get to think about the stuff where Eleven is going to go with the Shadow Lord included. We get to speculate about places like the Dream or, you know, the Arcadian, as it's officially called. And I'm excited. It's going to be an exciting few months ahead. And hopefully we'll get our next letter from the producer live sooner rather than later. Though, again, I'm not expecting one until March. So... Appreciate everyone for tuning in for the recap. Keep in mind, Twitch stream, I'm not done yet, but I am going to wrap this up for the YouTube side of things. Not the YouTube stream either. I mean, the video, it's confusing doing all that, you know? But I'm going to get this edited and rendered and put out to all y'all who did not want to stay up in Europe because I know y'all didn't want to stay up on the European side of things at 1, 3 a.m., whatever it was, or wake up early for that matter. So appreciate all of you for tuning into the YouTube video. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned. We'll have a bunch of Dawn Trail stuff leading into this as you would expect. So... I will see you in the next one. And until then, I bid you adieu. Bye-bye. And there's the added. There is no 6.55 producer live. There's nothing to talk about for 6.55. Yeah, EU will be waking up soon.